You are watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you can do if you are wearing a CPAP and would like to know about some of the new breakthroughs and treatment options for people with sleep apnea. And we're also going to talk about TMJ. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Jana Jarina. Dr. Jarina, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Randy. Now, before we get uh, into today's topic, for people that don't know you, because a lot of people know you as a cosmetic dentist, yes. I guess, and we had you on the show talking about mm -hmm. that. Uh, but, but tell us about your typical patients and what are the different procedures that you offer? Well, the typical patient, you know, is just that uh, we have a general practice. Okay. And with that is fillings, crowns, veneers, um, resin fillings. We do Invisalign, braces, six months miles, which is adult ortho mm -hmm. in short term. Um, and we do sleep appliances, uh, TMJ treatment, veneers, smile makeovers. So you do just about everything root there. Root canals, implants, yes. So kind of everything under one roof. Yes, exactly. All right, now uh, let's talk a little bit about, because we're talking about TMJ today. Yes. And you say it has a connection with, and when we say TMJ, what do we mean? Or TMD, TMJ what does it mean? TMJ is the temporomandibular joint, which when you put your fingers here and you open and you close, you feel that bone okay. sliding like this, mm -hmm. okay? So TMD is temporomandibular joint dysfunction. So that's what, so that's th what that's today's what the topic is. Then. Yes, but the patients okay. will call it TMJ, but it's really, we, we call it TMD. TMD, okay. And so what are some of the symptoms then of TMD? Well, a bad bite is going to put the jaw in a certain position. And so really, it's, a, it's about a bad bite. But the symptoms are... There's what do you mean bad bite? If you've ground your teeth down, if you clench your teeth, if you have a very narrow airway from potentially sucking your thumb uh, or having a pacifier for too long is going to make that arch, your upper arch or your maxilla, the bone, go in like this. So then the teeth are going to follow, and then you have a very narrow arch, and then you're going to have problems. You're going to have clenching, grinding, headaches, neck pain, jaw pain, tingling of your fingertips. You're going to have vertigo, dizziness. I mean, there's about 20 different symptoms, and it's all because of your airway. And So it's the way your teeth come together. It is, but it's, yeah, and then your, air, your airway becomes more narrow. Like, for example, if you have large tonsils and adenoids, and they were never removed, that's constricting the airway, which pushes your tongue forward, and your tongue's a very strong muscle, and okay. you want equal and opposite forces from your tongue and your cheek muscle. So if this is your tongue and this is your cheek, your tongue's gonna splay out because there's nowhere for your tongue to go because you have this large soft tissue or a very restricted airway, and then your teeth are gonna collapse in. So then the analogy I use is like a hammer and a nail. If you have a nail that's straight and that hammer comes down, that nail's gonna go straight down, but if mm -hmm. the nail's bent, because like your teeth are angled in from your tongue and your airway, then you're gonna be coming down like this, not down the long axis, and you're gonna have holes in your teeth, or recession, or something called cervical abfraction, which is that notching or ditching out at the gum line that becomes very sensitive, because the enamel, or the outer surface, is kind of eroded away. So there's so many different things that But most play of these things it. you say can be fixed. Absolutely. Okay. And, and I have a lot of questions because a, a lot of my questions revolve around migraine headaches. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about your background and training. You went to LVI. Yes, LVI. And then you had your own personal story. I do. You know, um, from the day I had my braces removed around the age of 12, I had headaches, probably five out of seven days a week. So my whole life I had headaches and migraines. Um, I've been on beta blockers. I've been on Neurontin, which is an anti-seizure medication. I've been on antidepressants, everything, trying to control these for headaches, your headaches, for my headaches. But then, you know, you become secondarily depressed because you're in so much pain on a daily basis that you, I was depressed. Medical doctors were giving you medications at this time. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So until about the age of 29, and as a matter of fact, I was in the ER with shots of Demerol. I mean, horrible. I couldn't even get out of that. Interesting, bed. okay. So I graduated school when I was 27, and around age 29, I decided to take this cosmetic course and learn about veneers. So I'm in the LVI in Las Vegas, and we're learning about veneers, and I'm really excited, and they start talking about a bite and how a bite is related to your health, overall health. If when you say bite, just for a working yeah. definition, we're talking about how teeth how come together. How your teeth come together. Okay, okay. That. All right, all right. So I'm sitting here, and they're talking about headaches, neck pain, migraines. I'm thinking, God, that's me. Headaches every day? or five days out of the week, hospitalized once every six months for a shot of Demerol or morphine or whatever I needed for the pain, which by the way, doesn't work because then you get this rebound effect of headaches. Okay. This was me and I sat there going, oh my gosh. So then I had this quest for knowledge to learn more. And so in a period of two years, maybe three, I took probably 10 courses out there. I was gone a lot. And this is why I'm so passionate about what I do because I don't get headaches. Okay, so you went through this treatment yourself. I did. 
And by the way, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about TMD or TM. J, J, temporomandibular joint dysfunction. Dis dysfunction that may be causing migraine headaches. Correct. Okay, so you had headaches your whole life, mm -hmm. and you're at this course. So what they what did they do for you? They I mean, made how me, they turn it around? They made me a neuromuscular orthotic, which is an appliance I wear in my mouth. And you primarily want to wear it most of the day, if not all of the day. But I have many patients that just wear it at night, and they're completely fine. How soon did your migraines go away? Oh, gosh, I would have to say within a couple months. But now remember, the longer the dysfunction with anything in your body, the longer it's gonna to take to get better. For me, it was pretty soon, because I, I was young and healthy and ate really healthy and you know exercised, so I think the healthier you are, the, the easier the result might be. At least that's what I found. So your migraine headaches were connected to a bite problem. And the, you know, the, the maxilla getting pushed back, yes, Okay. my bite. And so how, okay, so you had headaches your entire life and they go away. They're gone. How big is that for you? I mean, it's changed my life. Yeah. Do you have patient testimonials? I do. That, that, that I think say on my that, website, yeah. But that, I do, yeah. That will tell you that? Very interesting. But, but the part I'm not uh, understanding yes. is how is it connected to the bite? How is a headache connected? So all of our muscles are really connected. Okay. We're a, you know, everything is connected in our whole body. So there's so much vasculature in this area behind your joint. So you're basically pinching nerves. So there's nerves right here. Is that where? In, in, internally. Okay. You know, internally, yes. And you have all these muscles. The muscles connect to C1, C2, which is where your head sits on your spine, which all your nerves come through, like your spinal column. So everything is connected. You could have a torqued C1, C2, a ro something rotated, so then your jaw could be off. I mean, it's all interconnected, and it's just so amazing and fascinating. So in a way, you're kind of giving relief to the nerves there. And the muscles. Is that right? Am I understanding well, that correctly? So, so the way I explain it to patients is... We want, yeah, how do you we want, I, I, You know, we want physio lot. I get probably, I go into detail too much, probably okay. more so than I should, but because I just get so excited. Because, it, because you went through it. Right. Okay. So you want physiologic rest. I mean, I say to people, okay, if you held a weight out for 15 minutes like this, what would happen? Your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, your back. You can't do that. It's like the same thing when you're clenching all night long. You're putting all this extra force on your teeth and your body can't handle it. You're stressing everything out. Interesting. You're in like fat adrenal fatigue practically because you're just overloading your system. You can't handle it. So when you're sleeping is when most of this happens? Well, people during the day that clench can catch themselves and try to stop it. I mean, I'm a clencher. I'm always going to clench. But my bite's at physiologic rest, meaning I, my muscles are where they need to be. So I'm not overworking myself as much. So grinding I can completely fix for the most part. So you fix that. You were a big time grinder? No, I'm a clencher, and clenching is central nervous system issue, so you can never change that. But if your muscles are in the right spot, you're less likely to have pain. So I, I don't have any, you know, I have a little bit of neck pain. I don't get headaches anymore, but now, you know, I have neck pain from again. You said it changed the muscles in your face mm -hmm. or your skeleton. Well, so if you look at me, I have a very, you know, big jaw, and, you, and, and many people have the same thing. It's from clenching, so you build this muscle. The muscle gets bigger. Interesting. It's like working out, right? So my, muscle, my muscles are, are a little bit bigger probably than they were when I was younger. Okay, so, so if you have migraines, okay, let, and let's start there with migraines. If you have migraines and you've tried everything and they're not going away, you should see a dentist, a qualified well, a, dentist. A, a dentist that does neuromuscular dentistry. Neuromuscular really. dentistry, mm -hmm. and that's what it's called. That's what discipline of dentistry it is. Or a, a philosophy it is, well, it's a, of It's treatment? just a different way of treating patients. Okay. Because we hook you up to a jaw tracking, jaw, excuse me, jaw tracking computer and an EMG machine which measures muscle activity. So I'm actually measuring your muscle activity to get it so that it's comfortable and at rest. Okay. So many people in the medical world know what EMG machines are, and so it's easy to explain it. Um, that's really the process, and then we, there's a couple different options. You, we can give you an appliance that you wear at night. It's very comfortable. You wear on your bottom teeth. Mm -hmm. You should never wear an appliance on your top teeth. It should always be on the bottom teeth because your lower jaw moves and, and we need to get everything to a relaxed position. Um, that's an option. Uh, we can, people that have ground down their teeth, really you have to sometimes restore them back to where they were before. So sometimes you end up having to do uh, full mouth rehab or reconstruction. Can I show you? A, yeah, let's a take a look, let's take a look. Um, so here's a patient that we did combo treatment on, meaning that he had come to me with ground down teeth and sleep apnea and did not want to wear a CPAP anymore. So he okay. came to me, lives an hour and a half away, Googled me, came to me for a sleep appliance. Upon the examination, we started talking about all of his worn teeth, his old crowns, how he never smiled, wasn't happy with his smile. And we, he decided to 
not do the sleep appliance right away, but to restore his teeth first. Okay. So here's the before. Is that him smiling before? That's him smiling okay. before. Okay, all right. And then this is him after we had him in a neuromuscular fixed appliance to get his jaw to the right position, then restoring all of his te teeth, which needed to be restored because they were all ground down and had all old crowns in the back anyways. After that, we then put him in a sleep appliance. Now, when we do that, we have many, you know, we have some goals in mind. One is, of course, to feel better and to get a full night's sleep and not snore and have your wife be disturbed. But also, we look for certain numbers. It's called AHI, the Apnea Hypopnea Index. And zero to so the people with CPAP know these numbers? They do. And so we want okay. less than five is the number we want. So then after we have him to a point where we think he's better, we send him then for a follow-up sleep study at the sleep center, okay. whichever one that we go use. Um, and the goal is to get under five, and, and he's one of those So patients. no more CPAP for no this guy. No more CPAP. Have you ever had that to anybody else? Oh, I yeah. mean, Abs yes. That they were had a CPAP, mm -hmm. and now with an appliance, mm -hmm. yes, it goes away. Yeah. Because nobody likes CPAP, right? Well, it, you know, it really affects you. I mean, nobody life. likes it, right? No. I mean, there's a few people that were so unhealthy, and they, you know, they love it. I mean, and, they like and, the results, for, they don't like to wear it, is what I absolutely. mean to say. And you know, it really is the gold standard CPAP. So I'm never going to tell someone not to go on a CPAP. They come to me because they, they're they not sleeping with it in. They pull it off. Their spouse is in another bedroom, which I hear frequently, that they sleep in another room because it's so, I mean, they can't sleep because of the forced air and the noise. They just don't like it and how it affects them. And okay. they dry mouth and it's forced air. And they just, and then, you know, I have a lot of people that travel. So they don't want to lug this thing with them. So people come for me just even for them to wear a sleep appliance for when they travel especially. So they're breathing okay during the day. Right. They only have a breathing problem when they're laying down sleeping. Right. Because so it's you, obvious some sort of a... It's an airway issue. Which doesn't help when you've ground down your teeth. Again, because you've changed that dimension and your tongue is nowhere to go but back. So when you lay down, your tongue falls to the back of your throat, you snore. It's, and sometimes it's positional. So if they're on their back, you know, my husband sometimes will be on his back and snore and then I just hit him and he rolls over and he's fine. But okay. many people, you know, always snore, whether they're on their side or their back. And it's because of the collapse of airway, which okay. is when we have the appliance in, we're able to keep that jaw forward so their airway doesn't collapse as much. Is it comfortable to sleep in? It's very comfortable. And they're okay, so it's not... A... Now, what about over the counter? And we're talking about, by the way, TMJ and TMD today, yes. disorder. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also talking about sleep apnea. Yes. So it, these things go together. Absolutely. Okay. So they have over-the-counter remedies, just like with anything, though. I mean, it's, you think it's going to really work if it's over-the-counter? When you have a serious disorder, like sleep apnea is very serious. I mean, you know. So what, they're just, they, so, if so, it's not custom-made, it may not work? Right. Well, it, well it, not only is it not custom-made, I think it's like you boil it in water, and then you put it in your mouth so it fits. Mm -hmm. So it's really not custom-made. They're usually connected, and the, the beauty of the appliance I make or use is it's they can move their lower jaw so they don't have that claustrophobic feeling that their teeth are together. So some of these over-the-counter appliances do that for you. I mean, they're probably like $25 or $50, you know? And the problem with them is is you're not paying attention to the position, the position of the jaw. And if you don't do that, you could end up having pain, headaches, all sorts of problems involved. So when I, I take very special care in making sure that your jaw is in the right place when I do it, because you could have pain from just randomly or arbitrarily moving your jaw forward. It's dangerous. So backing up though, because we're talking about TMJ and, yes. and it's all connected yes. with migraines. But what are the obvious symptoms though, when you know you, like the early signs, the early that you know you have a TMJ problem? Well, many people don't even know they have it. They don't, they, they're asymptomatic and have no pain, but they're breaking their teeth, they're wearing their teeth down, they realize they're clenching, their partner might hear them at night grinding. What about popping? Popping is a big one. Is that okay every once in a while? Mm, no. I've never popped. Okay. You know, um, but y you don't want that to happen because what happens is if you put your fingers here and open and close, there's a disc in between. When you open and close, the disc should stay in place. Slight, you know, what happens when, you're, when, you're, when it's popping is the disc is sliding forward Okay. Or immediately, and it can get displaced, and it can be dangerous. Okay, so over if you the have, long term. So grinding, if you're told you're a grinder by your dentist, yes, you got to do something about it. You what happens if you do nothing? I mean, does it just progressively get worse? Yeah, and we have patients that what's really wonderful is we take intraoral photos. So we have pictures, and we'll monitor that progression. If someone doesn't want to do anything because it doesn't hurt them, they're fine. They don't, like you tell them they're a grinder and they don't care. And I tell them they're wearing their teeth down, and I tell them that they're chipping their teeth, and over time they're going to need crowns. I'd much rather give you an appliance at night than have to put a crown on your tooth to okay. protect the tooth. So you could break teeth, you could, you know, 
those are the early the signs. gum recession also gum recession how? how what does gum recession have to do with a bite problem if your bite teeth are not lined up properly you're putting extra force on your teeth and the gums recede the thinnest area of your tooth is at the gum line and it's where the we say the enamel rods are part of the enamel the rods run in a different position and it's weaker so then what happens is this causes the gums to recede and or have this ditching out effect it's like a half moon and you can put your finger in there and feel it okay and then that becomes sensitive so that's that's another early first sign so who is your ideal patient that can watch a program like this and and they have migraines or they have you know they're grinding or sleep apnea who is, you know, and you even said, I guess that's a tough one for you to answer. Well, I mean, if you have pain, I can make it better. Again, so if you wake up with a sore jaw, by yeah, the way. That means you're clenching and doing something at night that you shouldn't be doing. So again, it's an airway issue. It's where the way your teeth come together. So by being able to get you in an appliance at night would be a wonderful thing. Now. The proper appliance. What should somebody look for in a dentist that's going to be doing this? Because you've had a lot of training. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to look for to someone who is constantly doing continuing education and making themselves better and being able to offer services to patients like this. Um, someone who is a neuromuscular dentist. Okay. Because so the term is neuromuscular. Neuromuscular dentist, yes. Okay. Someone who's going to be able to get that jaw in the right position with the right tools. Okay. And uh, so you see migraines reversed every week in your practice, would you say? Once every, a month? More than once a month, yeah. And it can take a period of time. Like I said, the longer the dysfunction, the more chronic the pain, the longer it can take for you to have results. Okay. The problem is, is many of these pain patients are discouraged because they've spent so much money, they've seen so many doctors, they've been on so many, so much medication. Do they come in and say that? We've spent so All much money? All the time. What and do they, they spend money on, by the way? What are they uh, spending money on? Out-of-pocket costs because they've maybe maxed out their insurance or they're constantly going to chiropractors or they've done everything. They've gone to Mayo Clinic, they've gone here, they've had to spend all this money and no one can find out what's wrong with them. And they start to think they're crazy. You know, they start to think that, you know, God, what's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong, nothing's wrong. So with your migraines, you had no symptoms at all? None of this clicking, None. clenching, nothing? Nothing, nothing. I had nothing. no symptoms, no. I thought my teeth were great. I mean, this must be a happy group of patients where you could take their headaches away. Oh, it's, yes. They write you letters, bring you things. Yes, I, you know, we have some clips on those little flip cameras to, to, to you know link it to our website and we're working on all that I'm a little slow with all that okay. technology so the bite so no more CPAP I mean because this is two different topics we're talking it, about it really is but it's connected I mean I have patients you know like this patient that came in for one thing and ended up you know we did something totally so if different. your teeth you say are getting shorter and shorter for example can I show okay. you another patient sure, sure. I don't you can't really see his lower teeth but his low, he had no lower teeth left. He had ground them down to nothing. He, we were almost into the nerve. And I tried to explain to him, if your lower teeth need root canals, there's nowhere to restore them because your bottom teeth are smacking into these. It just fits. And I take, hand them a mirror and I say, look at your teeth. Slide your lower jaw forward. Do you see that, how it fits like a lock and a key? It just fits perfect. That's what you're doing at night. And you're grinding that surface down. So there's nowhere to fix, even fix those teeth. And so for him, you know, he said, yeah, fix my, get me the So right, grinding right is not back. something to be ignored. To take no. light, and patients, do they take it lightly? Some do, like you it, tell them, because they don't have any pain, so they don't, they they don't, don't want to do anything They don't care. Okay. And then, then, you know, he ends up like that, and he's thrilled. Did he have any pain associated? No pain. Or no? But his teeth just kept wearing and wearing I, and You know, wearing. now that I think about it, because it was a while ago, I think he had chipped one of his, you started chipping his lower teeth because they were so short, and they were just breaking. And he realized he recognized he had a problem. Okay, so you have more photos. Um, I do have. And a, these are all what TMJ or T. And, and again, they, the, the definition TMJ is the joint here. And TMJ TM is the dysfunction. Is the dysfunction yes. or disorder? This patient, um, okay. she wasn't happy with her lower crowns, and she had a little bit of look like tetracycline stain. So she really um, wanted veneers. Then diving in further, because you know our health history, we ask the questions: Do you sleep well? Are you well rested? You know, do you have headaches, neck pain? Nothing. Then as we start to develop a relationship because she's coming in and we're, you know, I'm treating her, she tells me she has a headache every day. So then I restored her to this. And she's, you know, doesn't have headaches anymore. Now she, after I did her veneers, told me she had headaches. So after like a year. So then because I, she just thought, why am I telling my dentist the headache? Yeah, so it's she not related. That part out. Right. So then I gave her then I gave her a neuromuscular orthotic to wear at night 
She only wears it at night and she's headache free. Now, if, if I would have known this information before, because I asked her and people say no to me and then later on they'll say, oh yeah, I do have a headache every day. Because again, you're right. Every they, day they have a headache? They don't think it's related. Okay. Not, yeah, people do, like myself. I would have restored her bite to that neuromuscular bite. So she wouldn't have had to wear that appliance. Does that make sense? Okay. After and, the fact. But her headaches are gone. They're she gone. doesn't. She tells you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, I mean, the patients, are they surprised? That their headaches go away? You know, after, Are they a little after bit? they're, yes, but after they're pain free for a while, they kind of forget, they forget about how hard, how, what it was like. They forget that, you know, because they feel so good, that they forget that they had all these problems. But yes, at first, I mean, when they come in, they, you know, they're all, everyone's Okay, amazed. so let me get this straight. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. I just want to make sure I'm understanding this correct. Okay, so you have these nerves right yes. here. If your teeth aren't coming together right at night, you're grinding because your teeth aren't coming together yes. correctly, yes. right? And it's causing like, pinching of a nerve in a way. And muscle fatigue. You're fatiguing these muscles. Like if you ran 30 miles every day or 15 miles. So all night you're moving and you don't right, even know it. Right, right. You're putting, I, I mean, Randy, if you okay. ran 15 miles a day. You're tired. Every day. You'd probably hurt your ankle, your knee, your back. It's just too much. Your knee replacement. So if a patient is watching this, okay, they have migraine headaches, right? And they've never talked to a neuromuscular dentist about this. Uh, they're wearing a CPAP or they have a, a, a bite problem. Their yes. teeth are short. What does a consultation look like at your office and how soon will you know I can help you? And, and with what certainty can you tell them you think you can help? Well, they spend time with one of my women at the office and they, we take pictures and we get a health history and we talk to them just about everything. Okay. Then I come in, talk to them, and really I can tell just from looking at you if something's wrong really? with your... Really? Well, yeah. I can see if your bite's too deep. Can you tell if I have a problem? You have a little bit of a deep bite. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but for some people, it doesn't matter because they okay. have no problems. And many people that are asymptomatic. A deep bite means what? Like a little a bit of an overbite? overbite. So then your lower jaw is pushed back, which pushes the condyle, the bone that moves when you open and close, mm -hmm. back towards your ear. Basically pushing on your ear and moving the disc. And, you know, you, that's how you can get some ear pain. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. So um, I look at the patient. We talk about medications they've been on. We talk about what's happening. I, I tell them, share stories with them about other patients, testimonies, pictures. Um, and then we give them a treatment plan. We give them options. And some people sign up that day. And okay. Some people go home and think about it and call back. Give me some of your best clinical stories or you to offer people yeah. watching this some hope. Well, it's challenging at times because people are very skeptical because again, they spent all this money, they've done all this work, all this time, they've missed work. And they're leery of what I'm telling them because nobody else has told them this. Okay. So they don't believe me. I had a woman who had been a patient of mine for years who just never said she had headaches and we're just having conversation, talking, and she tells me she has a headache every single day. And so we talked about an appliance for her and we talked about other options. She chose to do the removable route where she wore an appliance just at night, headache free, no headaches. Really? And it's changed her life. She can ride her horses again and she has, you know, able to do things that for a while she couldn't do. She couldn't work out because she was so tired. Her husband was, you know, wanting to do things with her and she didn't want to do anything. Not in the mood was, when you have a yeah. headache all day. Right. So that's, that's, a, that's a story that I think of because, you know, I see her Any every others? six months. Well, we have many stories, you know, just like that. I have patients who really had no pain, but were breaking their teeth. I make them an appliance. Suddenly they say to me, you know what? I didn't realize how good I feel now. I felt horrible before. I didn't even know it. I didn't even know I felt like that because now I feel so much better. I have a patient in particular that I wish I could share pictures with, but she doesn't want anybody to know what she did. Okay. But she only did it because she is 50 and single and back on the market and didn't, wasn't happy with her smile. Well, then I started to show her how she had all this wear and her, how her crowns were wearing away at the gum line. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay, well, give me the best option. I gave her the best option, which is getting her in an appliance and then changing her bite into that dimension. And she now says, I can't believe, I used to have neck pain every day. I didn't realize it. She just suddenly lost 50 pounds. She's just a totally different person, smiling all the time because she feels good and she didn't realize that she felt. There's a lot of people that don't realize they feel bad. But for those that feel bad, it's just, it really changes lives because big. it's really, it's a, it's a big deal. Like for you. Okay, yeah. good. Now we are out of time. I want to thank you for coming to the show, but we haven't talked a lot about the CPAP, about the people that want to get off the CPAP. And uh, if they want to find more, they could go to your website. Yes. You have information there on we that? We do. Yes. But you want to make sure, again, you're going to someone who's very qualified and very trained. A lot of people kind of jump on board and want to do different things. But you want to make sure that you're seeing someone who um, 
really can give you the best. I mean, I mean you've it's your health. I mean, this has been your life's work. I'm not exaggerating here. Yes. Because at 27 years old, I guess you attended a lecture, you had migraines. Yes. For people that miss the, the beginning of this. Yes. And so you've been studying this jaw joint relationship. For 10, over 10 years. Like a fanatic, right? Yes. I, I mean, I, I, because it's, because when you, when you live it and breathe it yourself and then you witness what happens with other people and then now this huge link between sleep apnea and your airway and TMD. I find it hard to believe though that people that had C, that, that were on a CPAP that with the things you're doing with appliances, custom made appliances, yes. that there's no more CPAP. It's amazing. I mean, people are- And they're sleeping through the night. And they're sleeping through the night. And now don't they do those sleep study numbers? I number? mean, they do. I mean, they, the sleep study numbers, do they go down? As yeah, well? at, they have, that's so there's the goal. proof that there's, what you're doing absolutely is there's proof. Interesting. You know, their libido is better because they, they're sleeping. They're sleeping. I mean, there's a big link with that that people don't really talk about, but there's a, a big link with that. Um, you know, they're functioning better at work. I mean, it's really dangerous if they have a sleep apnea. I mean, you could fall asleep at the wheel. I mean, I worry about all these people that drive trucks. You're tired all the time. Obviously. You're tired all the time. They're just drinking soda to stay awake or Red Bull. You know, which is doing worse. You know, it's more harmful for them. Um, you know, you have an increased risk for cancer, for stroke, for everything, because you're not getting that oxygenation into your cells. So come in and get a consultation. Come in and get a consultation. We'll talk all about it. We'll share it with you. And the migraine headache crowd? Yes, come you in. Say, is that a big, look, I don't know a lot of people with migraine headaches. Would you say this is, there's tens of thousands? There are. But where in, in, uh, in Wisconsin? Yes. Maybe 100,000 that could potentially, it could be connected to a, a yes. bite problem? And even, you know, headaches, I mean, daily headaches, or even, you know, people think they get, they're used to it, right? Their body accommodates to it. So I'm like, do you get headaches? Oh, not really. Well, you know, five days a week, five days a week. That's a lot. Three days a week. Three days a week is too much to have a headache. You know, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Very Randy. interesting. Thank you. You've been watching the wellness hour leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again, or direct a friend to it, you go to our website and just put in Dr. Jana or TMJ or TMD, and you'll find it there for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.